I let the water come rushing back and they all drowned. <laughs> all of them? <laughs> yeah, they all deserved it though, so it's cool. Yeah, but hadn't you hardened their hearts to make them do all of that and therefore deserve it? Oh, never mind that, Moses. Look. Let's get to work. Hey, my voice. What happened to my voice? What? I don't know, Lord, I... Hey, it happened to me too. What for? Hey, you can't do this. I'm God. Ha, please. You're one of Nosco's stick figure cronies. Now get out of here before I bend you in half. As for you, Nosco, sit down. You're about to get a lesson in history, again. Oh, I suppose you're one of those Christians who thinks the Ten Commandments ought to be posted in school classrooms, huh? Frankly, no. I don't care. What? Look, Stick Boy. People who want that are asking for a Band-Aid when they need a cure for cancer. The solution to what they want is wholesale social revolution and activism, along with confrontations in the public square. Not token gestures like posting the Ten Commandments all over the place. Oh, so you're on... Our side on this one? Uh, no. I'm not on your side either. As far as I'm concerned, you fundy atheists who object to the posting of the commandments are just a bunch of sniveling whiners who are afraid of your own shadows. Then... What am I here for? This. A piece of granite? No, to rip you a new one, as usual. Now, I have some questions. First of all, what exactly do you think the Ten Commandments are? Uh, the standards by which God would judge human behavior? And what cereal box did you get that understanding off of? Uh, Ecclesiastes 12, 13 to 14 for one. Good night, what a moron. What? It says, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And what makes you think that specifically refers to the Ten Commandments? Precisely, it doesn't. The word used for commandments means any command or instruction given by anyone, even humans. It's not specifically tied to the Ten Commandments. Now since you're a little dense, let me recommend you check out my series on the applicability of the Old Testament law today. That ought to send your basketball head spinning a few yards. Let's get to all this about specific commandments. Where do you get this stuff about being able to respect following other gods and worshipping images being okay if it's part of your culture? Where do you get that bit about commandments being given and then it being okay to break them? You like to ramble a lot, don't you? Well, uh, do you believe that the Ten Commandments are the basis on which Western civilizations are built? Uh, not exactly. The actual argument would be a lot more complex than that. More like the entire Hebrew predisposition was a major influence on Western law and society, though not the only one. Where are you getting this stuff from, a chick tract? Uh, well, some of those laws, like the ones against stealing and killing, aren't that far from what people would follow anyway. Yeah, so? If they weren't in there, you'd whine about God not having laws against stealing and killing. But, uh, some of those laws are at odds with what produces an advanced civilization in a healthy human society. Yeah, right. Thousands of years of law codes like that with restrictions just as strict or harsher. In Babylon, Rome, medieval Europe, didn't aid civilization one bit. It was only when Tom Jefferson came up with freedom of speech that we managed to invent fire in the wheel. Look, moron, to get to that healthy human society took steps. Any social historian will tell you that. The uh, why not command freedom and liberty? Are you that stupid? All you get by commanding freedom and liberty in the ancient world is a blank stare and total chaos. Their survival depended on mutual reciprocity and dependence. Freedom and liberty in the modern sense would have dissolved the glue that held their social world together and caused it to descend into absolute barbarism as everyone went off doing their own thing. Newsflash, Nosco. They didn't live in a world with a 7-Eleven on every corner and air conditioning in their bedrooms. The seeds of freedom and liberty won't sprout until you till the ground for them. And even then, they have to be tended carefully by a responsible and informed population. Uh, say, God's sure okay with murdering people even though he's got a prohibition on it? Yeah, newsflash, study Hebrew, the word refers to killing in the manner of a predatory animal. That doesn't cover killing in war or by judicial execution. 
Or anything else you fun the atheists whine about. Well, gee, when you get down to it, only three of the Ten Commandments are parallels in Western civilization. That's no big deal. Five. What? Five. The Sabbath Commandment still touches on daily life now. Way less than it used to, of course, but it still counts as an influence on our society. And there also used to be laws against blasphemy in American history, so you have to count that one, too. <laughs> Look, Nasco, let's get down to tax here. Like I said, I'm not here to argue for any sort of direct influence of just the Ten Commandments on Western civilization. The real question is the broader influence of the Judeo-Christian thought on our social and political landscape. And since you get your education about that sort of thing off boxes of chocolate frosted sugar bombs, I'd recommend some real serious reading for you. Okay, stick boy, I'm done. Try to do some real research next time. Sheesh, stick figure scholarship. I'm sure glad that's over with. Oh, forgot the reading. Here you go.